you're back with the lawn engineer so i've got an update on one of my projects uh, i did a previous video easy stump removal now that was a bit of tongue-in-cheek a little sarcastic because that was anything but easy um, attacking those stumps but i did it with a chainsaw and a splitting maul axe uh, kind of a deal there just kind of cutting into the ground um, and then beating on it with the uh, splitting ball to get the big pieces out and that way you can see this is the last one I just finished there so I did six in total one of them was was quite large you can see here I got it planted already um, I put some dirt over it to level it but that was probably the biggest one these other two uh, the last I just finished but six in total so a lot of you guys out there are probably if you watch that you were cringing as I was using my chainsaw to cut into that stump inevitably I hit dirt um, the stump is is kind of has some dirt in it around it um, it's inevitable don't think you're going to use your chainsaw and be extra careful and you're gonna be the guy uh, who doesn't touch dirt while you're in there so there are consequences for that and we're gonna look at those right now what is the aftermath of using your chainsaw like a stump grinder. Let's take a look. All right, here is my saw. I really like this saw. It is a steel MS362C. This is a great saw. So it's one of their Pro Series saws. It has the Mtronic electric um, fuel management. So this thing idles like a dream. Um, I thought my steel carbureted saws ran just fine in the past, but after switching to this, it, it, it's a big improvement. So I'd recommend going with one of these saws, but it doesn't come cheap. This saw, I think is about $800. But what happens to this thing when I use it as a stump grinder? What's the aftermath? So we'll get into that right now. The first thing you probably notice is the chain is pretty loose here. So why don't you just tighten that up? Well, I'll tell you why. I am out of adjustment. So this chain has stretched, which is a bit of a misnomer. So what's actually happening there, this tray this chain length has grown so much, I'm out of adjustment. Um, so all that dirt, that grime that we're getting into in the ground has worn these pivot points so the link and then the pin so much that there's so much slop in there that the overall length of that chain has grown so much that i'm out of adjustment so this chain is junk i can't use it anymore now i kind of knew that going into this so i used uh, an older chain actually two older chains so i ran this chain first had the same exact problem, and then went to this chain. So part of the aftermath, I have basically ruined two chains. So that's uh, part of the penalty you're gonna pay is you're gonna ruin chains. Now the other part here, we'll, we'll take it apart, see what else uh, we got going on. So we'll take our, our tensioner cover off here. You can see it's pretty nasty in there. Um, there's no damage to it. Just kind of caked with some sawdust dirt mixture. So we'll clean that out. I'm sure that'll be fine. And the other thing we noticed with the bar is holy mackerel, all the paint's gone. And if I look close up top here, I see some bluing. So bluing is an indication that this thing got really hot. So again, that's a symptom of getting all this grime in there between the chain and between this bar surface um, wearing that heavy. So on its own, that's, that's not a huge deal. It's just an indication that this thing got hot. And actually, if I feel on this surface, um, I probably had worse burrs on here indications of that bar wear before this it seems like it's polished those off so that's not a huge concern but what is a concern is oh uh, you hear that the bearings in this 
front roller tip are gone. So add that to the mix of junk here. So, so far we're up to two chains, one 20 inch bar. Now we'll take a look at the power head. Um, really what's interacting with this dirt here and, and uh, is just dirty, um, you know, that could be impacted because of that chain stretch problem that I talked about. And really it's not stretch, it's all those pivot points wearing and the, the chain length getting longer. Um, I had that chain come off a few times because it happens so quickly that you don't notice it before your chain's out of tension. So there is a little bit of uh, damage here. Um, this is basically a guard for the chain. When it comes off, it kind of keeps it in place there. So I'll fi file that a little bit, take the, the rough edges off there, but that's not a really a big deal. Um, so overall, the power head itself is fairly unaffected. We'll look at the sprocket here. So that's another piece um, where some wear in there, you know, some dirt, some grime, some damage could possibly have an impact. And really, I don't notice anything uh, advanced wear compared to the normal. Now, you'll notice this is one of the features you get with the Pro Saw. It uh, captures um, the chain a little bit better than the, the residential Steel chainsaws have a different kind of sprocket that wears a little faster. Um, but, but mine looks to be in still in good shape, so I'm not worried about that. So overall, like I said, the power head uh, relatively unaffected, other than it needs to be a, a good clean. So I'll take the air compressor, uh, blow it off to clean it up. However, there is one more lingering problem that I've noticed. When I took it off the shelf to get that last stump, I noticed there was bar oil underneath the saw. So I believe what has happened is the pump for that uh, bar oil is under this. So I've had this happen to be one before, one time before. If a lot of dirt gets in there um, around that pump and gets uh, around there, it tends to leak from that area. So I think I'm gonna have to take this apart and clean that pump and, and it will solve my problem. Um, so overall, not bad. I knew there'd be some issues going into it and you hear constantly, do not you know, cut into a stump with your chainsaw. This is the reason why. Two chains, one bar, and a leaky oil pump, which I have done before, so I'm gonna do myself. I'll probably make a separate video on that and show you how to do that. Um, but overall, just otherwise a dirty power head. I got a secret. I'm not too, too sad about ruining that bar because it uh, gives me a good excuse to pull this bad boy out of retirement. 20 bucks, 40 bucks, 80 bucks, bye bye. So I've got a tip for you. This uh, blow gun with this in, uh, fl inflation nozzle works really good it, for uh, getting in all these tight little um, recesses to clean this stuff up. Even on the open stuff, it blasted off pretty good there with your air compressor. You just got to make sure you're pointed away from your face. Otherwise, you're going to get, uh, you're going to need a shower. All right, good enough for me. Although I got covered. We can do the same thing here with the power head. This works pretty good for blasting all this dirt out of here. I also like to pop the cover off here, blow this out. You see, it's not too bad. None of that dirt and everything got in there. It's fairly well protected, but I want to make sure to blow this out and clean it before I remove this air filter so that um, none of that gets inside the intake. All right, almost looks as good as new, so I'm going to just pop the air filter off here. That is a extremely nice feature about this Pro Saw is not only the quality of this air filter, but just how easy it is to take on and off. So now that I have that, we can... All right, basically we're back to business with our saw, so we just need a new chain and a bar. This thing's ready to put back in the service. I'm probably still gonna take uh, the clutch assembly off here and have a look at the, the oil pump there um, to clean that up, make sure that's not the cause of my leak, but uh, otherwise this thing's ready to rip again. So people say, hey, dummy, 
don't cut into a stump with your chainsaw, you're gonna ruin it. Well, that's true, there is some damage. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't ruin the power head, um, but there are things that it, that it does add some wear and tear on, and we looked at those today. So if you're gonna do it, know that you're gonna, you're gonna go through some chains and you're gonna have to sharpen those chains a lot while you're using them, even in the field. Um, that takes some time and you're gonna have to throw them away when you're done and you're gonna have to throw the bar away when you're done. Uh, but at the end of the day, the power head and the, and the bulk of your saw is just fine. Um, and so the cost benefit there I, I look at, so I remove six stumps. Rule of thumb, bringing a stump grinder in, they say 50 bucks a stump, you're gonna have to pay them. So that's 300 bucks, you know, a couple chains and a bar are, are well below that. Of course, my time there uh, to beat on those stumps, but we all know that's basically worthless. Uh, so anyway, I'm okay with it. Um, will I do it again in 20 years? Mm, maybe not, but uh, worked out well this time. All right, now you know what happens. You know the aftermath of what happens when you take your chainsaw and drive it down into a stump. So you got to make the decision for yourself. Is that something you want to do or are you going to avoid it? Obviously, I did it. Adios.